about the jazz. And I just want to go back to Henrietta Levitt. I don't know if I make it clear, if I made it clear, but she found the Cepheid variables. So the Cepheid variables she was working on were found in the small Magellanic clouds, okay? So the Magellanic clouds are small galaxies, like dwarf galaxies that orbit our Milky Way. So the Cepheid variables that she was working on were uh, inside the small Magellanic cloud, okay? So her work was very important because she found a way to find the distance to other galaxies, okay? So she, she understood that when you look at Cepheid variable, the time it takes to blink a full cycle, so to go bright, dim, bright, okay? So that period is related to the luminosity. So by looking at those stars, you know, so the, um, the pulsation, the pulsation time, the pulsation period, you can find the luminosity of the star. And then if you compare luminosity to the brightness, so how bright they appear to be on Earth, we can find the distance. So the thing I forgot to tell you is that um, the period is going to increase. So the luminosity will increase as the stars are aging, e e evolving, evolving with time. So they get older. So the period will increase. And so is the luminosity. So this is referred to Levitt uh, law. So she died, also she had a poor health, so she died very young, like in her 50s, but her work was very important. So Levitt's, Levitt's law. Okay, so I wanted to emphasize that. So let's go back to uh, 7.4. So for test number three, it's gonna be on Monday during, um, from 10 to 12, so I will let it open from 10 to 12, but there is no class, so you take it on online. It, it should not take more than an hour. I leave it open for more, so for people who are entitled to more time. So I will keep repeating, because if you miss the test number three, you will have to come to office hours at 8 a.m. in the morning, so you don't want, you don't want that. Okay, so where we were here, we were here. So we were talking about binary systems and you have different kinds of binary systems. So that's what we're gonna talk today. But using those binary system, um, we have a way to find the masses of stars, which is amazing because you don't need to go to a hard store, um, hardware store like Home Depot order a blue star and, and then put your star on, on a scale. It will not be possible, of course, but you have ways to do that, okay? So you use simple math, very simple math. So the first equation, I call that the seesaw equation. So you see here the two stars here, they orbit their common center of mass. So this one will be closer to the center of mass, of course, because it has more mass. So we have a very simple equation, M1 R1 equals M2 R2. In addition to that, of course, the one with less mass will move faster and they will tug on each other. So we have also this equation here, which is also very simple, which is called the conservation of momentum. In addition to that, we have this third equation. So that will be Kepler's third law of planetary motion, very simple. You just need an algebra class, right? Most of you uh, took an algebra class and it was amended by, by, by Newton. You see that relationship here? You will have the mass M1 and M2. So just massaging those three equations, you can uh, find the masses of stars. And the other thing I told you is that if you have something really, really massive. So it could be a neutron star, or it could be a black hole, and, or it could be a star on the planet, or it could be a big star and a small star. Then you see the center of mass will be inside the big star. But the big star nevertheless will wobble. 
because Newton's third law say you cannot tug without being tugged back and you cannot tug harder that you are being tugged, okay? Which is not a very intuitive law, okay? So we talk about that. So now we're going to talk about the different kinds of um, binary, binary system. So the first kind is called optical binaries. So what are optical binaries? They are also called fake binaries. So it seems from your perspective that those stars are close to each other, okay? That are binary system, that they form a binary system, but it's not. So that means they are not bound, okay? So to have a real binary system, okay? You see gravity, gravity, um, will uh, tug, so one will tug on this one, this one will tug on them, so they are bound together, they are glued together because of gravity, right? But those ones here, so here you have an example, Alcor and Misa, they look like they, they are close to each other, but they are not. This is just an optical illusion, okay? So they are called optical binaries, meaning they do not orbit their common center of mass, and they are not glued by gravity. So a very good example will be those two stars here that you can, if you have a good eyesight, you can resolve them. You can tell them apart. So back then, before you could go to the optician and they have all those kind of machines to measure how well you can see, uh, they use that as a test for eyesight. So I don't know if... Uh, some someone wanted to join the army, for example, they wanted to make sure uh, the, the eyesight was good. So they will tell them, okay, can you, how many stars do you see? And, and, and if they see two stars, that means they have a good eyesight. So these two here, okay, they are called Al Alcor and Misa. So they are part of the Big Deeper. Okay. So that's one kind. So these are fake binaries. And then very rarely you have visual binary. So it means you can see both of them, okay, using a good telescope. So here you have an example. You have star A and star B. I don't know uh, which star is that, but you see they are rotating about their center of mass and then they come back to the same position. So you can find the period, the time it takes to go back to the same position. So these are called visual binary, meaning you, you don't need an uh, indirect method to detect the binary system. It could be seen okay, with a telescope. Okay, So you can resolve them. So you can see both of them. So these are called visual binary. So a good example here is in the constellation the swine and um, you have two stars here orbiting each other and you can see them with a telescope okay so they will be located here so you have a yellow dwarf star and a red dwarf in 1996 so remember the first exoplanet ever detected that happened in 1995. So first they found planets orbiting a neutron star. So that was not expected. And then for the first time, they detected the first exoplanet orbiting a sun-like star. And just after that, they detected this system here. They, they detected the exoplanet also orbiting this uh, binary system. So this binary system is... Uh, it's called 16, 16 Cygni B. So Cygni, Cygnus means swine. Okay, it's a swine. It's a constellation of the swine. You can see here that you have the tail and, and you have the wings. So 1996, they, they did find an exoplanet. Okay, so that's an example of visual binary. So it means a binary system you can see. You can see both of them orbiting, moving around the center of mass. Okay, so here is another example. So very famous two stars. Here you have a gold star and a blue star, and you can see them with a good pair of binoculars. 
and it's also part of the constellation. So that will be your constellation here. It's part of the sky constellation, the swine. Okay, and it's there at at the tail here. And they are gravitationally bound, so it means they are glued together and they orbit their center of mass. So it's a beautiful sight here because you have a blue star and you have a gold star. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. Another, another example here is Polaris. So remember, Polaris is the North Star. You find it at, at the tail here of the small uh, deeper here. See, you have the small one and here you have the large one. So Polaris, you can see it with your naked eye, but you cannot resolve this system because actually it's a system of three stars orbiting their common center of mass. By the way, one of them, remember, is a Cepheid variable. Okay, so those three stars, you can resolve them using a telescope, do orbit their center of mass, right? And you can see them if you are using a good telescope. Yeah, right, so you can see Polaris with a binocular, a good pair of binocular, or you can see it with a naked eye, but otherwise to, to resolve those three stars, then you're gonna need a telescope, okay? So these are called visual binaries. The fake one are called optical binaries, okay? Even though it's a three star system, so it's a multiple star system. Okay, so the third type, they're going to be called eclipsing binary. So it means one of the stars you cannot see. You only see one star. However, when the small star, okay, it's going to go in front of the first star here. So they orbit their center of mass. Okay, uh, you're going to miss some of of the light here. Okay, so you see here, it's called the transit. This star is transiting in front of the first primary star. So that will be the primary star, the second star, secondary star. So you cannot see this one, but you can see the dip. Okay, so when you look at this star here, okay, you see it's gonna be very bright. When the blue star is in front of it, you are missing some of the brightness, okay, but not much because this is blue. So even though it's eating up a piece of this red giant, okay, so you still have a, a dip, but the dip will be very small because this one is a blue star. Okay, so it's also very luminous. Okay, so then you don't miss anything. You see the full brightness. And then when the blue star goes behind, now you are missing a lot of brightness because the blue star here has a lot of oomph. So these are called eclipsing binary. Okay, so I have some... Um, I have some video eclipsing. So let's see if I can find them. So eclipsing binary. Um, eclipse, eclipse. Do you see anything called eclipsing? You know what? You cannot see that because I'm not in the right folder, that's why. Eclipsing, eclipsing. Okay, so this this uh, animation is very nice. Are you watching, guys? You are not on your uh, tablet or phone. You see, you have two stars orbiting each other. 
So orbiting the center of mass, you see the center of, of mass here is very close to the big star. Okay, so that's one thing. You see that they are bound together, so they are gravitationally bound, so they are glued together. Now, when this small star goes in front of the blue star, you're going to miss a lot of brightness because the blue star, remember, blue means hot, hot means uh, very luminous, and plus it's also very big. But when the small star is going behind the blue star, you are still missing some brightness, but not that much. Okay, so that's the best animation I could find. So when the blue star goes behind this one, you are missing a lot. And then when the small star goes in front, you are still missing, but that, not that much. But using those deep here, we can find the size and even the mass of the smaller, smaller star, even though you cannot see it with your telescope. You cannot resolve them, but you have a way to detect them in an indirect way. Okay, so these are called eclipsing binary. For that to work, they, of course, the, the plane here, the plane where they orbit, has to be in the same, same uh, uh, site than us. Okay, so otherwise you cannot detect that. So that's a very good animation. And then let's see if I have something else. Okay, so here you have also another example. So again, again, you can only see one star, you don't see the other star, but you can detect it because when this one goes in front of that one, you can have a deep here. And when it goes behind, it's gonna be a small, a small tip. So this one is more bright than that one. So that comes from your book. And then let's see if I have another animation here. So this is called transit. Okay, so if you have a small star orbiting a big one, you cannot see the small star, but it just happened that if it's in the same plane where you are looking, looking at, you see you're gonna have a dip in brightness. Is that clear? So you can use that to find the, the masses of stars and even their sides. So these are called indirect, indirect method. Okay, so let's see if we have another one here. Thing. Because as one star blocks another, the total light we see from the system dips, just like in a solar eclipse when the moon blocks the sun. Over the course of one orbit, we see two such dips, as the first star blocks the second, and then half an orbit later when the second passes in front of the first. If the two stars are similar, say, both like the sun, then the two dips look very similar. But if one star is much brighter than the other, then the two dips look very different. The brighter star dominates the total light we see, so when the fainter star goes behind the brighter star, the light hardly drops at all. But when that fainter star blocks the brighter one, we see a bigger dip in the thing. Because as one star blocks another, the total light we see from the system dips. Just Okay, so that video comes from uh, YouTube, and it's a channel called Crash Course in Astronomy, and he has very cool animation. So if you want to, um, if you're interested. Okay, that's all. So by the way, I found this picture, so it's not a real picture, but um, you, you can see Henrietta Levitt observing the photographic plate here. Okay, maybe this is the small Magellanic cloud and she's looking at the Cepheid variables. Okay, so that will be, we say the third type. So the fourth type, they are called spectroscopic binary. So it means even though you cannot resolve the two stars, we can detect their motion using their stellar spectrum. You see, when you, when you look at uh, the light coming from those two stars, this star is going to wobble. Okay, so it's going toward us, away from us, toward us, away from us. So when you look at the spectrum, you see when the big star is going toward us, uh, the QR code is gonna be blue shifted, like here. When it's moving away from, uh, from us, it's gonna be red shifted. So we can detect 
that it's a binary system, but we can also find uh, the speed, okay, the relative speed relative to us. So we are using actually the Doppler, Doppler shift here. So I have a video. I don't know if I have video. Maybe this one. You see, you have two stars orbiting each other and using spectroscopy, okay, you can see those QR codes moving. Okay, so those two stars seems to have about the same mass because they're gonna move about the same amount. And then when the star is smaller, you see it's gonna move even further. On, on the continuum, okay? That will be the more massive star that you see here, so it doesn't move as much. And here you cannot even, uh, I don't think you can resolve them, but you see that one is moving, okay? So that means you don't see the second one, okay? Because it will be too small, but you see the big star moving, so you can know that there is a companion. Okay, so you use spectroscopy, and we talked about spectroscopy before. Let's see if you have here. Okay, same thing here. You have a big star moving and a small star, so they orbit their common center of mass. And you can see that if you look at the spectrum, so you have a telescope and you have a prism. So you have your uh, continuum here, the rainbow, and you see the black uh, lines here moving pro and fro. So by analyzing that motion, we know, you know, how fast they are moving relative to each other and, and how far they are from each other. And you can find the mass and find a lot of things about this system. So this is called spectroscopy. So again, the great informant in astronomy is light. Okay, So you collect the light, you analyze the light using spectroscopy, and you know so much about not only the stars, but the universe. And I had another one, but of course, no, I have to find it. No. If you use a prism to spread. Did I show you this one? Spectroscopy, maybe? I don't know. I had a nice movie, but I don't know what it is. Spectrum should be, or maybe Doppler, Doppler effect. No. Ah, 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 this one. We may not see that motion directly. If we take spectra of their light, breaking it up into individual narrow colors, we can see the Doppler shift in their spectra. On their merry-go-round path, one undergoes a red shift as it moves away, and the other has a blue shift as it moves toward us. These kinds of stars are called spectroscopic binaries. Remember Mizar and Alka? We may not see that motion directly. If we take spectra of Okay, so again, this comes from that YouTube channel crash course in astronomy. So I have uh, very good animations. So this is the Doppler effect for light, okay? So we already talked about the Doppler effect. So for example, if you have a police officer, they have a special gun that will emit uh, ultrasound, I think. So it will, uh, the wave will bounce back. And if you are going too fast toward the police officer, you see the frequency is going to increase, okay? So it's going to be blue shifted. And by measuring the shift in frequency, the, the computer will compute your speed and give you a ticket or not. So if you are moving really, really, really fast, it's going to be so much blue shifted that a red car, like that beautiful Maserati or something like this, will turn, turn blue. But that won't be possible unless you go really fast, like almost at the speed of light. So that's how it works. Okay, we already talked about that. If the star is moving away, it's going to be blue uh, red shifted. Toward, it's going to be blue shifted. 
So we can use this information to find, you know, the speed of stars. And if we have the speed of stars orbiting their center of mass, we can find their masses. So B star, you see, okay, it's going to move toward us, away from us, toward us, away from us. So the B star will have more mass. And this one, it's moving, but not as much. So this is the time. You see, it's moving uh, away from us, toward us, away from us. And they are always opposite to each other relative to their center of mass. What I want to bring your attention to is that the math here is very simple. You can find the relative speed, so relative to us, just by measuring the shift. Okay, so the Doppler shift, the shift in the wavelength. Very simple, it's just a ratio here, so very simple algebra. Okay, so we can measure the shift to measure the speed of the stars. So you can see here how the spectrum is being shifted back and forth, right? But that works not only for stars, but it also works for a star and a planet. That's how we can detect exoplanet. So if you have an extraterrestrial life far away and they look at our sun, it will be maybe able to see the sun, but it won't be able to see Jupiter, Saturn, and the other planets. However, they will see that the sun is wobbling, okay? Because the sun turns on Jupiter, so Jupiter is tugging on the sun. So it's called a wobble. And uh, if I, here, you have an example here. So that could be Jupiter, for example, that will be the sun. So the center of mass is inside the sun because the sun is so large relative to Jupiter, but it's still wobbling. So if someone is looking at this uh, solar system far away, okay, it's not going to see the planet, but it's going to see the sun wobbling toward the extraterrestrial life, away from the extraterrestrial life. So using spectroscopy, for example, uh, they will be able to find the mass of the sun and understand that the sun has planets around. Okay, so you can see that here. And you see the period is 12 years. So it means it takes 12 years for the sun to go back to the same position. That's because Jupiter takes 12 years to orbit the sun. Terrestrial years, right? You can even detect the wobbling because of Saturn. Okay, so it takes a cycle of 30 years because it takes Saturn to go around the sun 30 years. Isn't that amazing? Who knows? You know, some, some uh, living things can be observing us, observing the sun and detect the wobbling of the sun. So that's why the temperature of the Earth is going to change over time, right? Because of this wobble. When the sun is toward us, it's going to be warmer. Away from us, it's going to be cooler. By the way, it's, it's better to be warm than to be cold. Okay, I'd rather to be in a warm era than to be in a cold era. You know, you have more people dying from cold than you have people dying from heat. You can see that if you study history, you have uh, during the Middle Age, you have the Little Ice Age, and people were starving. You have a lot of paintings about that. People were literally starving because when it's very cold, nothing can grow and people cannot eat, right? So it's worse to be cold than to be uh, too hot. By the way, if you look at the statistics, you have more people dying from cold than you have from, from uh, heat. So anyway, that was a tangent. So let's go back to our business here. Okay, oh, that's a very, very, very cool topic. Very cool topic. So those uh, binary system can be very exotic. Very strange things can happen when you have two stars orbiting each other. But if they are very close, okay, something very interesting can happen. So first of all, I just want to remind you uh, evolution of star. So let's see if I have a picture. I think I found a picture this morning. 
something have so many things that it's oh here no no that's not it okay how what's the name of that picture Is that this one or I'll just click on Let's that instead one. witness a series of size, size comparisons. No, I'm, I'm just looking here, here. Okay, bear with me. Are you paying attention here? You don't uh, space out, right, everyone? Uh, yeah. You are paying attention over there? Pay attention? Okay, so it's all start with a cloud and dust and and um, dust and and uh, gas, right? So it's a nebula, and then from that nebula, you're gonna have a proto star. So let's say it's a star like our sun, and then you see it's gonna start fusion. So it's gonna start burn hydrogen into helium, and it will be located on the main sequence of the HR diagram. And then at some point, it's going to run out of hydrogen and it's going to swell up, okay, because it's going to start burning helium into other elements. So for the sun, it's going to even burn up to carbon and then it's going to stop. And then that will be called a red giant. And then at the end, you know, when it's going to run out of fuel or, or not that it's not that it's running out of fuel, but it's not hot enough to sustain fusion, it's going to burp out its outmost layer, so it's dying, and the dead corpse here is called a white dwarf. So that will be um, the evolution that we expect from a sun-like star. If you have a big star, so it depends, you know, how much material you're going to use to build the star, so you have a massive star, so when it's going to run out of uh, hydrogen, it's going to swell up even more. So it's going to be a monster, a red super giant, like Betelgeuse. Okay? It's going to keep burning, burning, burning until it reaches to iron. So all the elements up to iron. And then at that point, okay, it... Um, it will explode as a supernova and left behind, you can have a black hole or a neutron star. Neutron star is also a corpse, right? That will be the, the standard evolution of stars. But when they are in binary system, something very creepy can happen. Okay, so the evolution can be disturbed because what can happen here, and you can see here, is that you can have a mass transfer. So, for example, here you have a star. Maybe it's a, it's a red red giant. Like our sun will become a red giant. And here, let's say you have a white dwarf. Okay, and and they are orbiting their center of mass. But they are so close to each other that gravity here is going to be so strong. So it will it will behave like a vampire. Okay? It will suck all the material from that red giant. And this is called a mass transfer. Okay, so we call that a vampiric star because it's sucking the life out of its companion. Okay, and then it can go really bad very weird things can happen, okay? So one thing that can happen is that all those materials here, the material, first of all, is gonna form an accretion disk. And the, when the material is gonna fall on the white dwarf, you can have mini thermonuclear explosion, or you can even have a super thermonuclear explosion, which is called a supernova type 1A. So in that case, Everything is destroyed. Nothing is left behind, not even the neutron star of a black hole. Okay, so those supernovae type 1a are super, super luminous, very, very bright, and you can use them as standard candles. So, my point is that binary system can go wild and weird. Okay, so here you have another example. So you have a neutron star and a white dwarf. So already they are very, 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 very dense. 
So they have a huge, huge, huge mass over a small volume. So they orbit each other. So here you have the white dwarf and the neutron star. Okay, so this is called an exotic binary system. Okay, and they're going to shake fabric of space time, which behaves like a trampoline. So you're going to make gravitational waves that maybe you can detect on Earth. And then weird things can happen. So, first of all, uh, you see it's going to form an accretion disk here. So you can have all, all those materials here going around the neutron star. It's going to lose energy and that lost energy goes into a jet of X-rays, okay? X-ray burst, X-ray burst, okay? So that's why it's called the X, X binary system. So they could merge together and become a neutron star, a giant neutron star, or they can merge together, together and become a black hole. So it's not very well understood. What is true is that these are very weird systems. So when this type of things happen, it's called the mass transfer. And the thing is to understand that uh, it will disturb, it will disturb the evolution of star. Okay. Um, you have X-rays. And if if those two, if those two here merge together and the mass is so big that you're not going to have a giant neutron star. You can have a super extra strong thermonuclear explosion, okay? And we call that a kilonova, like a supernova, but it's even, even uh, more luminous than a supernova, so they call that a kilonova, okay? So in that case. So I have a very nice movie, videos, let's see. Mass transfer, where did I put that under? It's always hard to find my video. Transfer, okay. So that's a video from YouTube. You have a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's called Professor Dave. Also, he has great animation. Are you watching? He knows a lot about the science stuff. Professor I Dave explains. Me on their phone or disappear for 20 minutes. Our solar to the system bathroom? has just one star, remember. the sun. But this is actually a bit uncommon in the galaxy. A greater percentage of systems are multiple star systems, meaning that they are systems containing two or more stars, and in particular, binary star systems, which specifically contain two stars, are exceptionally common. When we can see both of the stars, they are called visual binaries, and if the plane of their orbit happens to coincide with our line of sight, such that they pass in front of each other, they are called eclipsing binaries. This situation this allows, allows us to gather, to gather important, important information, information about the system, about the system and is actually, actually one of the one best of the ways to detect them in the first place, place, as we as can we chart the reliably periodic, periodic change, change in luminosity, luminosity first, first as the larger star, star passes, passes in front of the smaller, and then as the as smaller star, star passes, passes in front of the larger, larger in cyclical in fashion. fashion. But beyond, but beyond this, this, we also we know that stars come in many different varieties. Therefore, Therefore, the possible, the possible combinations, combinations that exist for the two, for the two types, types of stars, stars that comprise a binary, binary system are even, are even more, more numerous. numerous. What, are what are the most, most interesting, interesting combinations, combinations we have been able to find for types of binary, binary star, star systems, systems, and what, and can, what can they teach, teach us about the universe? universe. Certainly, Certainly, there are there many are binary, binary systems, systems that involve very sun-like sun stars orbiting, orbiting each other at quite a distance. An example, An example of this is Alpha Centauri A and B, which we, which examined, we examined in a previous, in a previous tutorial. tutorial. But a far, but a far more, more interesting case involves close, close binary, binary systems. systems. This, is this is when the stars, the stars are very close, close together, together orbiting, orbiting around, around their center of mass, mass quite rapidly. Quite rapidly. Sometimes, Sometimes they are, they are so, so close that the, that the gravitational, gravitational distortion, distortion produced causes, causes their stellar, stellar atmospheres to... I don't know if you can see here what's happening. There is a transfer of mass between this star. So let's say it could be a red giant and a white dwarf, okay? And if you have too much mass transfer, you're going to go over the limit for the mass of the white dwarf. So then that's when you're going to have a supernova type 1a and everything is destroyed.
to exchange material, or they could even be so close that they are in direct contact with one another, such as this system with two large, hot, main-sequence stars. So this, this system here is called the cuddling because cuddling system, binary system, because it's like they are uh, cuddling each other, they are kissing each other. It looks like a peanut too, so sometimes it's also called a peanut system. Practically, Practically overlapping. Overlap. This, is this is most, most fascinating, fascinating when, when one star, star is, a is a compact object, object like, a like a white dwarf, dwarf star, star, neutron, neutron star, star, or black, or black hole, hole, as this, as this object, object will begin to pull matter, matter away, from away from the other object, object in the system, in the system until, until a dramatic, dramatic event, event occurs. occurs. If a white if a dwarf, dwarf is causing the accretion of gas, gas from another star, star it, becomes it becomes a cataclysmic, cataclysmic variable star, star where, the where the incoming gas gets very hot and, and emits radiation. We sometimes, we sometimes call such an object, an object a vampiric, vampiric star, star, as it is almost as though it is sucking, sucking the essence out of its out companion star, star like a vampire. Like a vampire. If instead, if instead the compact, the compact object, object is a neutron, neutron star or, or black, black hole, hole, this is this called is an X-ray binary, binary, which can, which can be, be either, either a low-mass low or high-mass high mass X-ray binary, binary depending, depending on the mass of the donor, donor star, star, which is, which the, is the other, other star, star in the system, system feeding, feeding the compact, compact object, object with material. material. One, One fascinating, fascinating binary, binary system, system is called, called AR Scorpii. Scorpii. This is this a is binary, binary pulsar, pulsar which, consists which consists of a white dwarf pulsar, pulsar about the size of Earth, Earth and a red, red dwarf star. star. Pulsars, pulsars are highly magnetized, magnetized objects that emit that powerful beams, beams of radiation in a, in a rapid, rapid periodic, periodic manner. manner. Typically, Typically pulsars, pulsars are neutron, are neutron stars, stars, but sometimes, but sometimes they, can they can be white dwarfs, dwarfs as well, as well though being be much less compact, compact than neutron, neutron stars, stars, they rotate, they rotate more, more slowly. slowly. AR Scorpii, AR Scorpii contains, contains the first, first object, object of this type, of this type that, was that was ever discovered. discovered. We should, we should note, note that binary, binary systems, systems can have can complicated, complicated evolutions. evolutions. Take, for, Take example, for example, a binary, a binary system, system with two fairly two large main sequence stars, stars which, form which form with around 15, 15 and 20 solar, solar masses, masses respectively. respectively. We, know we know that stars, stars of this size evolve, evolve rapidly, rapid, since the inward, inward gravitational pressure, pressure is so strong, so strong that, fusion that fusion occurs at a furious pace, pace burning, burning through the hydrogen in the core much, much faster than in smaller than stars. stars. Eventually, Eventually, one star, one star enters, enters a phase, a phase of, expansion of expansion and will, and will exceed, exceed its Roche lobe, lobe meaning, meaning that it juts that it far enough into, into the gravitational field of the other star, star that one, one will begin, begin to pull material, material away from the other. From the other. other. This material, this material may form, may form an, accretion an accretion disk, disk as we saw as we previously, saw previously, but it can but it also can be absorbed also through direct, direct impact, impact, as shown, as shown here. here. We see, we the, see blue the blue star acting as the vampiric star, star rotating, rotating faster, faster and flattening, and flattening out. out. We, also we also see that an enormous, enormous percentage of the other star's other mass, mass is being transferred in the process, actually the majority of its mass. This star is now so much more massive that fusion increases. So this is interesting because we're going to talk about that when we're going to talk about Al Gore. So it means one one star, the vampiric star, sucked all the life from its companion. So this companion died like it's uh, being killed alive, right? Because all the material left is sucked toward this one. So you cannot have fusion anymore. Increases even, more, even dramatically, more dramatically, which generates, which generates a, stellar a stellar wind, wind that, causes that causes the other star, other star to become, to become small. small. Eventually, Eventually, this star, this star will, will go supernova, supernova and, leave and leave a tiny neutron, neutron star, star behind, behind potentially, potentially escaping, escaping the system, system altogether. altogether. The vampiric, the vampiric star, star will then will reach then a reach red, red supergiant super phase, phase where it expands, it expands immensely, immensely, after, after which, which it too will go supernova and leave a neutron star behind. So we can so we see can that see stellar that evolution, evolution is much is more complicated, complicated in binary, binary systems, systems due to the influence each star, each star has on the other. other. There are, there so, are many so many fascinating, fascinating systems, systems out there, out there. Not, not just, just binary, binary systems, systems, but triple, triple star, star systems, systems and beyond. beyond. As complex as, complex as they, they are, are, many of them harbor, harbor planets. planets. Could, there Could there be any habitable worlds that exist in such fascinating systems? What would... Do you remember in Star Wars, they had two suns, okay? So they had like a binary system. And from the planet, I forgot the name of the planet, they could see the, the sunrise with the two suns. What the sky look like, like on these on potential, potential planets, planets and moons, and moons with, with multiple, multiple stars, stars overhead? overhead. 
Perhaps, Perhaps we will find, we'll out, find out soon, soon enough. enough. Okay, um, so the main idea here is that uh, if two stars are close to each other, you can have mass transfer and one star can be the vampire, so it's going to suck all the material from the other one and the evolution will be disturbed for both of them. And then it can be uh, catastrophic at the end. So here you have two white dwarfs okay, orbiting each other and they're going to merge together. So once they merge, different things can happen. They can become a super white dwarf, but if they have too much mass, you can have a supernova as well. Oh, and uh, oh, you can have a black hole. See, they are making gravitational waves. So you have two white dwarfs orbiting each other. So white dwarfs are already dead, okay? There is no fusion occurring. So they go faster because they get close to each other. So you have more tug. What is left behind you can have another white dwarf or you can have a black hole it's not very still not very well understood okay they are called exotic binary system it's very interesting so here you have a neutron star and the white dwarf so neutron star and the white dwarf So this one was a regular star, so it's going to swell up. So you have a mass transfer between them. So it was not a neutron star, so it's a regular star here, swell up. The material is sucked to this one. So I don't know what was this one. I don't know if it's a white dwarf or a neutron star. But you get the idea, okay? So each time you have a mass transfer, so you have a vampiric star here. So this one is losing mass and this one is gaining mass. If the mass is too large here, oh, they disappear. Okay, so just to watch the simulation. Okay, I have another one here. That's a, that's a white dwarf and that's a red giant. So this is the vampire sucking the life out of this one. And all these have been understood very recently, okay? Relatively recently with all the technology that we have. Oh. I will tell you the story about the demon star next time because it's 1049. So we, we do we do have 